Hey, praise the Lord, it is I, Brother Clinton, once again, and you're back on the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God, so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth, as Jesus Christ commanded. Praise the Lord. If you have your Holy Bible, King James Version, please open up with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'd like to share with you something out of the scripture, particularly verse 16. And you may have noted that in the title of this video, it's probably going to say something about Pentecostals, a message for Pentecostals or something like that. And indeed that is true, but this message isn't only for Pentecostals. This message is for anybody who desires to believe and obey the word of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So I have a question for you. If you had a cat and your cat had no hair, she had no hair, your cat was completely bald, would you want to pet her? Seriously, would you want to pet your cat if she didn't have any hair? Well, some of you might say, well, she's my cat and I love her and I'd pet her anyway, and you'd be right in saying that. But the reason that I ask is that the it's commonly known that the reason that, for those of us who love cats, I love cats, I hope you love cats too, for those of us who love to pet cats, the reason that we love to touch a cat, the reason that a cat is so inviting to touch and pet is because of her fur, because of her hair, because she's furry and soft, and she's pleasant to touch. You like to touch her. It's pleasant to you to touch your cat, to stroke her head between her ears and stuff and scratch her under her chin and stuff like that, and scratch her belly and you know, pet her all the way down to her tail and stuff like that. It's it's very pleasant to do that. It's pleasant to your hands. It's pleasant to your senses to touch her. You see, because she's covered with fur. She's covered. You see, her fur, her hair is given her for a covering by nature, which is part of what makes her beautiful and part of what makes her desirable to be touched. That's what makes a cat beautiful. That's a lot of what makes a cat beautiful is her hair. And in the same way, when God created man, and then he took a rib out of the man's side and made a woman and brought her back to the man, and the man took her to be his wife, part of the reason that she was so beautiful and attractive and desirable to the man was because of the covering that God gave her. He covered her with beautiful hair. He caused her to be covered with long, beautiful hair that not only started on her head, but grew down over her shoulders and over her breasts and her back and her arms. And she was beautiful to look upon. She was desirable to touch, to hold. Because God gave her her hair for a covering by nature. And so as we read the scripture, if we're in 1 Corinthians 11, let's start with verse 14. It says, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. You see, this is a perfectly simple passage of the scripture where Paul, the apostle of Christ, was making manifest that a woman's long hair is given her for a covering by nature to cover her body. It's something that is given to her to make her attractive. If a woman came to you, if God brought a woman to you and she was bald, if you're, a woman, if you're a man of God, you would be like, oh, uh, well, we can be neighbors and stuff, but, you know, you know, with all due respect, you know, no man in his right mind is going to be attracted to a woman who is bald or who has her hair shorn off like a man. Part of, a, a big part of what makes a woman attractive is her long, beautiful hair that covers her, you see, and it was given to her by nature for a covering. That's very plain. It's, it's very common. It's universally known. However, unfortunately, there are a lot of people in the churches today, and in particular a denomination that is called Pentecostal. Now, this may or may not be taught at your church if you're a Pentecostal, but by and large, Pentecostal churches teach, contrary to the scripture, that because a woman's long hair is given her for a covering, that she doesn't need to cover her head when she prays or prophesies. And that's not only confusing and confusion, but it's kind of ridiculous. Because it's really obvious from the scripture that a woman's long hair is given to her for a covering. And it's also really obvious from the scripture that the fact that her hair is given her for a covering 
doesn't mean that she doesn't need to cover her head when she prays or prophesies. Now we've got our Bibles open to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's just skip back to the beginning of the chapter and let's read verses 3 through 6. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying with his head covered dishonoreth his head. Every man praying or prophesying with his head covered dishonoreth his head. If he's praying with his head covered, does that mean that he has hair? Does it mean that he has long hair? No. It means that there's something on his head covering his head. Something that can be put on or taken off. Something that he can put on and something that he can also take off to make sure that his head is not covered when he's praying unto God. It doesn't mean that a man needs to shave his head or shave the top of his head in a little circle like some of the, the friars used to do in the Catholic cults. It means that if he has something on his head, covering his head, he needs to take it off when he's praying or prophesying so that his head isn't covered. And if he doesn't do that, then he's dishonoring his head, which Paul just said is Christ. Christ is the head of the man. God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of the man. The man is the head of the woman. So every man praying or prophesying with his head covered dishonoreth his head. And, but, pardon me, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. Now to a Pentecostal, this is very confusing and it's confusion because if a Pentecostal is taking this verse 15 out of context and saying that her hair is given her for a covering so she doesn't need to cover her head when she prays or prophesies, I guess that they think that Paul was saying that if she's praying with her head uncovered, that means that she doesn't have her hair on. Now, although there are some women that can take their hair off and put it on, <laughs> that's not what God was talking about. That's a wig. That's not what God was talking about. God did not give Eve a wig, and God did not, does not give his daughters a wig to cover their nakedness. He gives them long hair. Long hair to cover their bodies. For the same reason that God put beautiful fluffy hair on a cat. To make her attractive. To make her touchable. To make her desirable to touch. <laughs> to cause her to be desirable. Beautiful. A woman's long hair is given her for a covering. But now Paul said before that, earlier in the chapter, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. If she doesn't have something covering her head, Paul said it's the same thing as if she were shaven, and it's a shame for a woman to be shaven. It's ugly, it's hideous for a woman to be shaven. That's why if a woman has, you know, a woman in the world has some sort of sickness or, or disease that causes her, or accident that causes her to have to shave her head or her hair falls out it's an embarrassing thing for her and she'll buy a wig or she'll wear a, a veil constantly so that nobody knows that she's lost her hair because it's a shameful thing for a woman to not have her long beautiful hair there are even women today that don't even know the difference because their consciences are seared and they go around cutting their hair off like men and walk around on purpose like that stand in front of the mirror with their hair cut off like a man and say oh yeah that's the look I'm looking for Wicked, perverted women who don't even know the difference between a man and a, and a woman, between male and female, between that which is right and that which is wrong. There's lots of people like that. But Paul said, But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, then let her be covered. So you see, it's perfectly simple and obvious by just these three verses, of four verses of the scripture, 
that for a woman to be covered when she's praying or prophesying does not mean that she has her hair on. It means that she has something on her head that can be put on or taken off. And if she puts it on, that is to show power on her head, which means the authority that her husband has over her and her submission to the authority of her husband because of the angels. So when a woman who is praying or prophesying has her head covered, she is obeying God, she's not dishonoring her head, and she's showing her submission, her subjection to her head, which is her husband. And of course, her husband's head is Jesus Christ. So she's showing submission and respect to her husband's head, Jesus Christ, and to the head of Jesus Christ, which is God. This doesn't mean that she is praying with her hair on. It means she's praying with something covering her head. You see? If I have a, a cat, a kitty cat in my arms, and I'm petting her because I like her hair, I like how her hair feels in my hands, her hair is given her for a covering. But is my kitty cat covered? Well, she's covered with hair, yes, but she's not covered. Now, if I take a pillowcase and I put it over her, then she's covered. I can't see her. She's covered. You see? Covered is the opposite of discovered. Covered means that something is covered. You can't see it. You see? So just like the word head is used in this passage in a couple of different ways, like the word head in this passage is used meaning the ball of flesh on top of your neck, and also the word head in this passage is used concerning subjection and authority, like the head of Christ is God, and the head of the man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. So just as the word head, the English word head, can be used in at least these two ways, and even more ways than that probably, so it is that the word cover can be used in more than one way at all. Um, pardon me, can be used in more than one way also. So as a woman's hair, her long hair is given her for a covering by nature to cause her to be beautiful and desirable. That doesn't mean that when she is to cover her head while praying or prophesying that she needs to make sure that she has her hair on. It means that she needs to cover her head so that her head and her hair cannot be seen because her hair is a glory to her and it is given her for a covering by nature it is part of her nakedness just like her breasts and her belly and her thighs and every other part of her nakedness now there are parts of of our nakedness that are more parts of our nakedness than others if i may say so i mean if, if a woman's neck is exposed down to here it isn't the same as if her breasts are exposed or if her buttocks are exposed but those are all parts of her nakedness and her hair is a part of her nakedness as well according to the scripture and you can read about it in isaiah chapter 47 verses 1 through 3. the locks of a woman's hair are part of her nakedness they are a glory to her and they are a beauty for her husband they are not for the world to see and so especially when a woman is praying or prophesying the bible says that she is commanded to cover her head. Not only because she is showing her subjection and submission to her head, which is her husband, and also Jesus Christ and God, but also because her hair is a part of her nakedness, and we don't appear before the living God with our nakedness exposed. I don't get up in the middle of the night and pray to God in my underwear. If I get up in the middle of the night to pray, I put some clothes on before I get in the presence of God. Okay. Now, is that to say that if there was a, a fire in my house and I couldn't get to my clothes and I needed to pray to God to save me from the fire that I couldn't pray because I was naked? Well, of course not. But what it means is that when we have, as we have power to do so, we do as God has commanded and we come to God in a manner that is holy and right and good. And for a woman to come before God and pray or to handle his word, prophesying or speaking the scripture, which is prophesying, without covering her head, putting something over her head so that her hair cannot be seen. She is acting in direct rebellion against the word of God, and she is causing an affront to God. She is disobeying God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman who 
pardon me, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. For if it be a shame, but if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. You see, it's perfectly simple. The cover that Paul is talking about here in, in, in verses 5 and 6 is not her hair. It can't possibly be her hair. But in verse 15, it says, But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. See, if I have a little kitty cat in my arms right now, and I want to pet her because her hair is fluffy and nice, her hair is given her for a covering, and it's beautiful. But is my cat covered? Well, you might say, well, she's covered with hair, but she's not covered because you can see her. But if I take something and I cover her up, then you can't see her anymore. Do you know what that means? It means that she's covered. So the fact that a woman has long hair by nature, which has been ordained by God, that her hair is a glory to her and is given to her for a covering as part of her body, does not mean that she doesn't need to cover her head according to the commandment of the apostle when she is praying or prophesying. And anybody who would say otherwise and contend against the word of God, the doctrine of the apostles of Jesus Christ in this passage, to anyone who would be contentious, I would answer the same way that Paul himself, by the Spirit of God, answered. Verse 16, But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. You see, if you want to come amongst Christians and tell us that a woman doesn't need to cover her head when she prays and prophesies because she already has hair, I'm going to tell you this, we don't have any custom like that. Neither the churches of God. So you can take that somewhere else. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen in Jesus' name.